All right, we're gonna start off in a seated position. And I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. There is a lot to be thankful for. You know, this year's a little bit weird in that sense, but if we really look at the many different blessings that we receive on a daily basis, it's a great way for us to be reminded of what God has given us. So um, having said that, we may have eaten more than we normally would. And so as a result, I wanted today's practice to be a little bit more on cleansing, on detoxification. And I selected a Bible verse, actually there were two verses that came to mind last week that I'll share a little bit later on. But let's just start off in a little bit of a um, comfortable seated position. If you like, you can close your eyes and let's just connect with your breath. So as you're sitting here comfortably, you can sit on either a blanket, a towel, bolster, or a block, or just on, on your mat. Just feel your breath as you inhale through your nose and exhale through your nose. We think of our breath, how God breathed life into us. And in yoga, we always connect to our breath. Isn't that true for in life? If we can connect with God's spirit, and our day will always be seen with many blessings that we are bestowed. Just feel as you're breathing, feel your belly rising with your inhale. Nice and full, and as you exhale, just feel it relax. And then during the next breath, as you feel your, your belly expand, this time as you exhale, I want you to really consciously pull the belly button, your navel back to the back spine so you can feel yourself kind of compressing it as if you're one of these accordions, squeezing it out. Continue with your breathing, inhale. Exhale. Inhale and exhale. See if you relax your jaw, maybe your hand or your shoulders. See if you can also relax your, your glutes, perhaps you didn't realize you might be tightening up your glutes, those butt cheeks slightly. Just continue to breathe. And your mind start to focus just on your breath. You're kind of like, your breath's just kind of washing over you. Perhaps allow your breath to wash out anything that might be bothering in your mind. And as you breathe, then maybe allow your breath to even wash through your body. Checking to see what area might be a little bit tight or might be asking for some attention. And then we're going to slowly open up our eyes if you had it closed. And then we're going to just draw your hands just around your, your knees. So as you're sitting, you just kind of draw your hands around your knees and allow your back and shoulders to kind of go forward. So kind of um, coming, um, rocking back and forth on your, your sits bound. So feeling yourself back and forth a little bit. And make sure you draw in the opposite way. It's kind of like you wash your knees. Also, really wonderful for you to give a little bit of attention around your knees. You may have been sitting a lot. And then as you start coming up onto your um, quads, washing it larger. And 
And then as you do this, your shoulders are actually kind of going forward and back. And make sure you're allowing it to exaggerate, just get a little bit more motion into your shoulders. All right, let's get onto our, our hands and knees into the tabletop. Wonderful. So your knees are directly underneath your hips, hip width apart. Your feet, the top of your feet are flat onto the floor. And then your hands, your wrists are directly underneath your shoulder, shoulder width apart. Your index fingers straight in front toward the top of your mat. Thumb spread out wide. Your other three uh, fingers are spread out as well. We're just gonna go into cat cow. So as you're inhaling, drop your belly down into your cow pose. Just go to your, um, your length, we always talk about um, how far you want to go. Remember, just start warming up. As you exhale, go into your cat. So we're going to reverse, drop your tailbone down, drop your chin down, tucking it in. As you inhale, go into reverse into your cow. Belly goes down, tailbone up. Maybe your gaze is slightly up, shorter legs toward each other. Exhale into cat. So just go connect with your own breath. I really kind of, be very mindful of this. See if you can have your extension and your flexion matching your breath cycle. And this time, we're gonna actually bring our hips down to our heels into a child's pose. So a couple option. If you want, you can actually have your knees out wider toward your, the um, edge of your mat. And if so, that's going to be a little bit more intense on your hip flexor, so it's Yogi's choice. And if you rather have your knees toward each other, so your, your big toes are touching each other, but you could actually have your knees close together and that allows your back to round some more. So you can choose to have your knees wider, have your hands still out in front in the shoulder width, and if you want, you can slowly walk it away from you. So perhaps your head, the forehead touches the mat. And just, again, you don't feel it so intense. Just feel it where it feels natural, feels good. And then start connecting with your breath again. So now, if by chance you have your knees wider, perhaps your belly is falling in between your legs breathing, but if your um, knees are toward each other, then the wonderful thing here is as you're breathing, your belly's pushing into your thighs, and so you're really starting to massage those internal organs, all that digestive system. So it's perfect either way. But now you're more conscious of your the back ribs expanding, so you may be able to feel that growth, that nice, beautiful, large expansion. Maybe Thursday as you were eating, you kind of felt like the belly expanding. So this way, you want to feel your backside expanding. Now you're gonna walk your right hand off your mat toward the right a little bit, and then bring your left hand and place it on top of your right hand. So keep your left um, hips trying to make contact with your left heel still, and then you stretch there. See if you can perhaps invite your left armpit down toward the floor. It doesn't have to actually touch it. Just feel the nice stretch there. Keep breathing, feel how your back feels right above your left hips. And then walk your hands over to the left side, past the, the mat, so your left hand is off the mat, your right hand's right on top of the left um, hand. And again, your, this time your right um, hips are down by your right heel. And try to have your right armpit trying to come toward the floor. And you may notice how one side seems a lot easier, a lot closer to the ground than the other side. And it's because we are, we tend to be very asymmetric. Good. 
feel your breath here. Excellent. Walk your hands toward the center. We're going to have your hands down onto the mat. We're going to bring our soles back up this time. We're going to tuck our toes. Make sure your hands are a little bit further ahead of you so you're not in your tabletop because we're going to come into our downward facing dog. So um, having your hands, remember your wrists, uh, your, your fingers are directly toward the top of your mat. Then lift your knees up off the ground and then slowly start lifting your hips up. Heels come toward, toward the floor. It may not be touching the floor. And then your knees are most likely are bent. You walk your dog. There are a couple options, you know, especially if you had a couple weeks off, uh, you may choose to use a couch or a counter or a solid chair instead of going full on the ground. If you feel like, gosh, you know what? My arm just doesn't have the strength yet. I was mentioning some people, you can even lean against a wall. So you choose to start building up that strength. Wonderful. This time we're gonna inhale into a plank, top of the push-up. You can always drop to your knees. Make sure your spine's nice and straight. See if you need your shoulders nice and broad. Do not dump it down. Keep breathing. We're gonna drop our right knee to the floor. Left knee might be straight. If you're on your knees to begin with, that's completely fine. Now let's see if you can dro um, drop your left knee to the ground and lift your right knee up. And then when I say right knee up, see if you can press into the heel of your right foot so you can feel those abs, the core starting to engage there. Keep breathing. If you're ready, you can lift your left leg up and push back into your downward facing dog. All right, let's lift your right foot up behind you, three-legged dog. As you exhale, bring your right knee to your right elbow. Inhale, back up. Exhale as you bring your right knee to your left wrist, but still hovering. Inhale, back up. Exhale as you bring your right foot to your right hand. So you can drop to your left knee and then walk it right up. All right. So check your alignment, your um, right knees over the right ankle. So you might have to walk your foot up slightly. You can plant here. Do a nice little stretch. Now let's see if you can straighten that right leg so you kind of bring your hips back a little bit of stretch there you want you let your right toes up toward heaven and, and be mindful to see if your body is leaning all the way toward the left so see if you can kind of go back you can probably feel your left quad starting to awaken trying to really hold you up you can probably feel your right um, hamstring stretching. Let's bend your right knee, come back. All right, you guys ready? We're getting ready to go into that downward facing solid. So you're tucking your left toes, lift your left knee up, take a step back, your right foot, downward facing dog. Make sure you're in a nice strength. We're gonna inhale your left leg up. Three-legged dog. As you exhale, bring your left knee toward your left elbow. Inhale back into the downward facing dog. Exhale your left knee toward your right wrist or right elbow. Inhale back up. And then we're gonna bring your left foot by your left hand so you can drop to your right knee and just walk it up. So, of course, of all the days for me to wear a sweatshirt, I'm like, oh, it's so cold in, in my room during the day because it's all the rain. So you can always choose to use um, blocks or props or anything like that. Me always sitting in front of my computer, I always feel like, you know, I'm 
scrunching my shoulders. So I tend to want to keep my back or my thoracic spine to be a little bit more of a back bend when I do practice yoga. One of the great reasons to practice yoga. Check your alignment. Make sure that left knee is over that ankle or it's not, at least it's not past the toes. Although we're in a static, a static pose. So honestly, in many ways, if you were to go past your toes, in some cases, it wouldn't be dangerous in this case situation, but it's good to be in the habit of um, checking your alignment to where things are at. So let's go stretch that left hamstring. So as we start to lean back, and see if you kind of go straight back instead of toward the right side. Breathing. Excellent. Let's bend our left knee, come back to that low lunge, if you want to call that. And then we're going to take a step up with the right foot to meet our left, go into forward fold. Feel your lower back stretch. If you like, you can grab your opposite elbows and ragdoll. Maybe kind of shift a little bit side to side if that feels good for you. Perhaps you can maybe straighten your knees a little bit more. Doesn't have to. Drop your fingers down as you inhale here. Exhale, walk both hands over to the right side of your mat. Follow it. Keeping your left foot still grounded, also your right foot. Inhale, walk your hands to the center, and as you exhale, walk it all the way over to the left side of your mat. A little bit of stretch down there. Inhale back to center. We're going to slowly come up. So, do a nice position, your feet probably at hip width. Slowly come up into our standing mountain pose, Tadasana. Whew. All right. So if it wasn't so rainy today, boy, we had a lot of rain the last, uh, in the last uh, 24 hours or more. Um, There's even snow in, in parts of North Carolina, so we didn't get that, but it was pretty chilly out there today. So if we didn't have the cloudy skies, we would notice it's a full moon. So there's a full moon. Um, now, instead of doing yin, which would probably be a, a good favorite of all of ours to do, um, we're going to do some half moon balance later on. I'm just going to let you know that we're going to do some half moon balance, a little bit more of a balance challenge. So if you have blocks, two blocks, or or perhaps a chair or something to help you use those um, as props to support, um, you might want to have that as well. So we're going to inhale our hands all the way up to the sky. As we exit, we're going to go into chair. So let's bring our hips down. Your knees are gonna still be at hip width apart. What's so great about chair is think about it. You're lifting up as you're being seated down, both directions. Can you imagine sitting where Jesus is sitting right by the throne? Exhale your hands to heart center. Inhale here, and as you exhale, I'd like for you to bring your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. We're going to a little spinal twist. If you feel like your knees are, are not still staying at hip width, what you could do is heel toes your feet together. So let's do that, heel toe together. And then check to see where your knees are. So your knees should be aligned with each other. One will want to have a tendency to kind of shift in front of the other one. Your knees are going to tell you where your hips are at. Your hands should be at heart center. Inhale back to center. Exhale your hands down to the floor. 
and then lift your knees, I mean, straighten your knees slightly into your utasana, so your forward fold. Inhale as you sweep your arms all the way up to the sky. As you exhale, bring your hands to heart center and start getting into your seat of your chair again. So check to see where your knees are. Again, you don't want that knees to be past your toes. See if you have the weight distributed so it's not on your toes. In fact, you should be able to lift your toes up off the ground. Those little yogi's toes, you guys. So look at the toes. Remember how when you were little, you used to make those little turkeys from your hand prints or your feet prints? So see if those little turkey feathers could be ruffling right now. Inhale here, and as you exhale, bring your right elbow to the outside of your left thigh. Take a peek at your knees to see if they're in alignment with each other. Isn't it amazing when we stay connected with God, he directs us, teaches us so that we can stay straight in our path. Same thing, we always have to check to see where our knees are, sometimes there are different body parts and so forth. Your hands are at heart center, so you might shift your body some. Keep breathing. Inhale back to center. Let's bring our hands up to heaven. Thankful, thankful, thankful. All the way up, maybe a little slight back bend. Inhale, exhale, your hands all the way down to the floor as you bend over into your forward fold. Inhale, your hands to your shin, nice flat back. Exhale your hands down to the floor. Take a step back with your right foot. Maybe you might want to shift your left foot um, out some so you're at hip width apart again. We're going to drop your right heel down. Come up into your warrior one. Exhale into warrior two. So you're going to rotate your right heel. Bring your left hand straight in front of you, right hand straight back. Slip your left palm up toward heaven. Let's receive what God has. Let's go into our peaceful warrior. Now that Christ was, everyone expected Christ, Jesus to sit there and take over the Roman Empire, and instead, he had so much more planned. True kingdom. Exhale into warrior two. Let's bring your right forearm to your right. A left, I'm sorry, left forearm to left thigh, extend your right arm up. Or if you want, you can always bring your right hand to your right shoulders. This makes it more accessible, you can choose. All right, so we're gonna get ready for our half moon bounds. So if you have a block or something like that, what you're gonna do is take a small step forward with your right foot. And then as you bend your left knee more, you reach down to either block and then Lift your right leg up. So you're almost as if you're in the same plane. Right hand's going straight up. And you know what? If you fall, that's okay. That's part of the fun. Half moon balance. Bend your left knee, drop your right foot down. Left hand that goes back up into your warrior. We're gonna straighten your left knee. Shift, so your, your feet are nice and grounded. And shift your, your torso forward as if I'm pulling you forward to your left fingertip. Maybe you're reaching for that second, okay, maybe third helping of whatever your favorite dessert was. Rotate your palms and let's go into our triangle pose. So, connection between heaven and earth. Can you feel your left hip coming forward, your right hip coming behind you? Bend your left knee, drop your left right hand by onto the mat, your left hand onto the mat. Rotate your right heel, take a step back with your left foot, downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. You can choose to go into child's pose, or if you want, you can do a vinyasa flow, your yogi's choice. So that's where you do your knees, chest, and chin, or you just slowly lower your body down. 
Inhale to a baby cobra or an upward facing dog. Exhale into downward facing dog. Lifting your right leg up behind you, three-legged dog. As you exhale, bring your right foot forward to your right hand. We're going to drop your left heel down. We're coming up into that warrior one. Make sure your feet are at hip width apart. Exhale into warrior two. Rotating that left heel. So now your left foot is parallel to the back end of your mat. And you check your right knee as your right knee pointing toward that second toe. Let's bring a right hand palm up to receive. Exhale into that peaceful warrior. So you have options. You can either have your left hand down by your thigh. You can actually bend your elbow and have it at the back of your sacrum. And then rotate your uh, right palm up. Yogi's choice. Exhale into warrior two. I mean, inhale into warrior two and exhale into your side angle. So right forearm onto your right thigh. You can have your left arm straight up. This doesn't feel accessible or it doesn't feel good. You can always have your, your um, elbows bent. So your left hand is just touching your left shoulder. So a lot of different options. Now we're gonna get ready. So, you might be reaching for your block, but we're gonna go straight here, kind of straight your right lit, the right hand. You can reach for your block, bring your left foot in, and then lift up for your half moon bounce. So ideally you're stacked on top of each other. Your left hand over your left shoulder, which is over your right shoulder, which is over your right wrist. you want this to be a, even a bigger balance challenge, you bring your gaze up or towards straight, but that's not gonna be for me. Bend your right knee, come back down, come back up into warrior two. It's doing great. Straighten your knee. Okay, you pick what dessert you want, or maybe you're only really going for the second, second servings of the, the green beans. So shift forward, reaching toward area, rotate your palms, so both palms are facing the same side as your front. And then as you exhale, drop down, your right hand down toward earth, left hand up toward heaven. So see now if your right hips kind of going forward, left hips going behind, put yourself in that nice light pane of glass. You can choose if it feels good for your head, you can gaze up. If it doesn't, you look straight down or you can look straight. So important to listen to your body. Most importantly, listen to your breath. Are you nice and flowing? Is it just a nice continuous breath? Same thing. Are you connected with God? Can you feel the spirit flowing? Are you listening? Bend your right knee, come back up. We're going to cartwheel both hands down toward the mat. Take a step back, your right foot into your downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Knees stretch to chin or chaturanga. Things go up into your baby cover or upper facing dog. Get the shoulders nice and open. We're going to exhale into our child's pose again. So. You can choose again the wide knee or it being close together. Feel your breath. This time we're gonna come up, walk your hands toward our knees. 
So you may be sitting in our Virajasana. Well, not Virajasana. Sitting up. Okay. And then we're going to get onto our butt up. So a little bit more spine twist. All right. We're going to keep our right knee in. Hug your right knee to our chest. We're going to actually bring our left leg a little bit on a wide. And then we're going to extend, uh, uh, drop our, our right knee outward and bring our right heel in toward our pelvis on the floor. Now, with sitting, we tend to be really tight in our lower back muscles, but so be very mindful. If you ever tend to have really um, low back issues, chances are it's really tight. You know, it needs to, to be stretched some. And so we're going to be doing some stretch. So you decide how far to stretch. Remember, more is not always better. So you will really want to be a little bit more uh, mindful to your body um, by listening to your breath. So we're going to rotate, looking over toward your left leg. If you want, you can start bending forward toward it. Feel a little bit of stretch there. And then if you like, you can rotate your body back towards center and then allow your left leg to go, left hand to go along with your left leg and then and then um, go sideways. So some people like to choose to go all the way upward. I tend to not as much. I like to actually still open, work on opening up my shoulders. So I, I like to personally bring, uh, bend my right elbow, bring my Right hand on the back of my sacrum. Try to keep that open. So listen to what feels best for you. Some people may even prefer having a prop of some sort. So if you have blocks or a bolster, you might even want to have it alongside your left leg, raise it up. It's almost like a yin pose. You can even bend your right hand or left hand and then <laughs> use it as a prop. Like you feel a little, well, not a little bit. I feel a lot of the stretch along there. Right, let's come back up. Now, even though your right heel is still sitting there, let's see if you can kind of go forward now. So you're getting a little bit of stretch in your hip flexor, hands in front. Now, if you feel like your left knee is, is hyperextended, meaning kind of locked the other way, do a little bit of a micro bend there on your left knee, or you can uh, maybe uh, place a small towel and, and roll it and have it underneath there. But as you kind of come forward, you can feel that whole area being stretched. Come back up. We're bringing our left leg straight in front of us. Bring our right knee. You can either cross over the left extended leg, hug your um, right knee with your left elbow, and then bring your arm behind you. So again, don't go too far. Get a nice little twist there. But the beauty of it is you feel your right side pressed up, up against your right thigh. So you're going to keep your shoulders nice and broad. Don't have the right um, shoulder hiked up toward your ear. Most importantly is your spine is nice and straight up vertical. And feel yourself connecting with your breath again. So with yoga, there's the union between the, and the body and the mind through your breath. And just think the same in many ways, in, in some type of similarity, uh, we're connected with our spiritual by the Holy Spirit with us. 
So if we are really busy, constantly doing things, it's hard for us to hear the Holy Spirit. Once we are saved, the Holy Spirit is sent to us. But are we listening? Do we take that time to be still here to know who is God? All right, we're going to come back to center. We're going to bring our right leg straight out to the right side. Bring our left heel in. Might want to rearrange, make sure your sits bones nice and connected. And you're going to rotate slightly toward, facing toward your right leg. And kind of go forward there. Feel that stretch. Don't go too deep. You can just feel, feel it right at this perfect edge. You can feel it pulling slightly. What that does is it really allows you, your mind, and also some of the nervous system to, to hear what the body, physical body is going through. This is where it's wonderful where your, your mind can kind of do a quick scan of your, the rest of your body, not just in that area, but what else is going on? Many times we see things that manifest in another part of our body and just think they're very interconnected. So depending on what we might be eating, um, we might end up seeing like skin issues or perhaps um, like some type of pain in, in an area. And this time we're going to slightly bring, rotate our body forward. And now this time we're going to stretch out sideways. So your right hand goes alongside your right leg. And then you're going to either lift your left arm up. But really see if you can open your heart up, your heart and chest upward. So you have the option of what you want to do. You know, a little bit more stretch along that left side. Arms can go up. Or if you're like me, you may want to prefer to have your left elbow bent, back of your hands resting gently on the back of your sacrum. Just imagine your heart's just open to God. So in Hebrews, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience, not having our bodies washed with pure water. And it's true, a lot of times we have to detoxify even our mind and our heart. Sometimes watching what goes on in, in the world can really harden us. But then when you know that God loves us first, how much we can love others, that can really make a difference. Not just in our lives, but everyone that we become in contact with. Slowly come up and start bending forward. You can feel as you kind of bend forward, it's like wow, I can feel my sides actually kind of spring back. So be mindful of your right knee. So, again, um, since we are asymmetric, 
Make sure that right knee is not hyperextending. So if you need to do a micro bend, that's fine. Or just don't go, don't fold forward too deep, deeply. Slowly come up. Uh, bring that left knee up. We're going to bring that right leg straight in front of us. Do that little Mastrandra. Um, so bring that left foot onto the outside of the right leg. You know, hug that left knee with your right elbow, and then bring your left arm behind you. So it's very important to again keep your spine nice and straight. You can keep the shoulder, left shoulder down. You don't have to, you don't have to do your spine twist too, too intensely. So you can just rotate to whatever degree of rotation you feel most comfortable with. But just imagine you're squeezing. It's almost like wringing out a towel that was wet. So you're squeezing out to between those um, spinal discs. Keep breathing, but also as you're breathing here, maybe you can feel the belly pressing, the ascending cone pressing against your left thigh. Slowly come back to center. All right, let's bring your heels down. So detoxifying some more. Um, one of the best ways to do this is, of course, sweat it out. So one of the best ways to sweat it out is, of course, um, you to say foot pose. But we're going to do this a little bit differently. So we're going to have our hands right, um, hands placed right underneath our shoulders, lean back, and then just lift your both legs off the ground. Make sure your shoulder, uh, your spine is um, nice and straight. If you're shaking, the magic's happening. Just imagine it's shaking, detoxifying. All right, we're going to slowly drop to your forearm. Legs still up. Stay here, just feeling me shaking. Am I the only one shaking you guys? And then, and then slowly start um, opening up your elbows so that your lower back, your whole back falls, gets to come onto contact onto the mat. Get your legs straight up. Excellent. All right, drop your feet onto the ground. Your knees are straight up to the heavens. Your feet are on the ground. Extend your arms up over your head onto the floor. We're going to lift your left leg up and reach your right hand to your left leg. So we're going to reach it through here. Exhale, bring back down. Inhale, we're going to reach, or exhale, your left hand, left hand reaches your right. It's going to make contact and then back down. So we're going to keep alternating between the two. Now, if you want this a little bit more intense, you can, of course, have your knees bent. So you can do almost those bicycles. So this way. Then alternate. So you choose what level you want. So make sure you're breathing in between. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. So just having that cross, cross the body. Beautiful. And it's three, two, one, everything back on the ground. All right, so your feet are on the ground, your head, your back's on the ground. And go into a slight little bridge pose. So it's really important to keep your gaze up toward the ceiling. Um, your feet are at hip width apart, kind of walking closer by. Your hands are down by your side. Feel your shoulders nice and um, contact on the ground. So as you lift your hips up off the ground, so feel yourself like tucking, trying to have your lower back make contact to the floor. As you do that, you notice how your hips lift up, 
keep lifting it. Gaze still stays up toward the ceiling. Knees kind of goes away from you. So as you're lifting up, perhaps you're noticing your self contact with the back of your head, on the shoulders. You feel your quads stretching. You feel your glutes making engagement there. And try to keep your knees, in fact, make sure that your knees don't flare outward. So still making contact. Keep breathing here. If you like to do a bind, you're more than welcome to. You can always have your hands grasp each other underneath your body. And then if you want, you can slowly come down one vertebrae at a time. So start from the very top, allow it to make, make contact. I always like to call it like, it just each one kisses the mat. Slowly, surely, and hug your right knee to your chest. You can interlace your fingers there. So as you're hugging that right knee to your chest, extend your left leg straight. This is when we're moving pose. So your right thigh is pressed up against your ascending colon. If you want, you can even kind of rotate kind of rocking your right leg back and forth sideways. And then we're going to bend your left knee, switch sides, place your hands over the left leg, and just drop your right foot onto the floor. Hug that left knee even closer. And when you're ready, you can extend that right leg to so straighten that knee, right knee. And if you flex that right foot, you can feel how more of the leg makes contact. Keep breathing here. I want to feel the belly rising, but because, of course, your left thigh is pressed up against the left side, it's just kind of hoping to press against your descending colon. Again, this time, if you want, you can kind of rock. Your, your left leg side to side. And bend your right knee, hug both knees to your chest. Rock a lot side to side. In fact, if it feels good and okay for you, you can send your arms out, both arms out, palms facing downward, and then drop both knees toward your right side. Go slowly. So we, we want to allow your spine to be gradual, so nothing intense. And if you can't reach the floor, that's completely fine. You can use a block or whatever, or you can just be hovering. Inhale back to center. And bring it over to the left side. So again, since your hands are touching the floor, you may be just hovering. You feel how yourself to use the strength. And then as you slowly allow it to release down toward the floor. And 
Inhale your legs back to center. This time, bring both feet up toward the sky. Legs up the wall. Have your hands down toward the front of your mat, so palms still facing downward. I'd like for you to slowly bring your legs down. So they were straight up at 90 degrees, now going down toward maybe 45 degrees. Don't let your back arch. Try to keep it engaged. If you're feeling some shaking going on, <laughs> I can't be the only one shaking. <laughs> then stop at 45 degrees. Keep breathing, don't hold your breath. Bend your left knee, let the left foot touch the floor. Right leg still stays up. Bring your right leg all the way up to 90 degrees, your left foot still making contact to the ground. Have your left leg match up with your right leg. And then guess what? We're coming back down 90 degrees. Bring it down to 45 or whatever angle that you think is, is still at the point where you're like, I can, you know, you can hold it, but you're feeling that, that magic happening. So where you feel like that your lower back's lifting up completely off the ground. So try to make it contact to the ground. still, not all the way, but keep your navel to your spine. Bend your right knee so that your right foot touches the ground. Left leg is still at maybe that 45 degree angle. Keep breathing here. You're probably nice breath of relief. And lift that left leg all the way up. Straight up to the sky. Feel it stretching. If you like, you can even rotate your feet or foot, I should say. Left foot, rotating the ankle, drawing big circles, going the opposite direction. Bend your left knee, lift your right leg up. Do the same thing, lift it up, and then draw big circles. Rotate the ankle. I actually are really trying to use those muscles. So we have a tendency, especially if we're not, well, for those, there's so many guys that do a lot of running, but for the, most of us that don't do these marathons, um, we probably don't use strength in parts of our, our feet. One side tends to dominate versus the other side. So it's the reason why it's so important to really use all of the muscles. And make sure you rotate in the opposite direction. Great. All right. So left knee still bent, right leg straight. We're going to slowly, so if, if it's as straight as possible, but all the way up vertical as much as possible, slowly start um, bringing the right leg to the right. So you're opening up some more. See if you can keep your left hip still onto the ground. Keep breathing and stop where you feel like it's not your left hips and lift. Keep breathing, but stay there and then come back up. Bring your left leg to match your right. Drop your right knee, to, uh, bend your right knee, drop your right foot down. And then same thing. So feel where, feel where your, um, your hips are relative to each other. Shake was nice contacted and then slowly start opening up that left leg to the side. See if you can keep that right hip on the ground. You might notice how one side tends to be a lot more open than the other side. Okay. Keep breathing. Come back up. Bend the knees, hug your knees to your chest. 
Extend both hands out and across, and then slowly bring both knees over toward the right side again. And perhaps this time it may contact the floor. And if not, feel free to put some props underneath there, blanket, blocks, cushions, whatever. Just have it so you can actually relax so that you don't have to hold on or grip on to anything. And you allow yourself to surrender. Take three full breath cycles here in this. Relax state. Then engage your core so you feel yourself, your navel coming to your spine. Then start lifting up, both knees to the center. Then keeping that same control as you allow it to drop over to the left side. So same thing, if you, you know, desire to have a prop of any sorts underneath there, please do so. Then find yourself in a position where it's nice and comfortable and just surrender, just release. Well, the full breath. But because the spine is twisted, you can feel it full breath. So as you get ready to bring yourself back in, navel to spine, gauge your core and bring yourself back to center. Once you can actually reach for your toes, place your fingers, peace finger, so your second, your index finger and third finger around your big toe into your child's pose. I mean, happy baby. Mm -hmm. I want to see you do a child's pose that way. You rock the little side to side. We're going to get ready for our final resting pose, Shavasana. So when you're ready, you can bring your right heel to the right corner of your mat. Left heel to the left corner of your mat. See if you can tuck your angel wings, the short blades underneath your body. Your, your palms are facing up toward heaven. You should always be receptive to what God's telling us. And, and see if you can um, have your head so that your chin not pointing straight up to the sky. Your forehead, your third eye is kind of like in the same plane. So if you need to, you can always place perhaps like a, a, a blanket of some sort. If you like to have a circle roll underneath your neck, feel free to do that. If by chance you feel like your lower back might be tight and, or is bothersome, you can always have your knees bent. You can either have um, something underneath your knees, like a towel or a blanket or bolster, or you can even have your knees bent where your soles or feet are contact to the floor, and then allow them to gently rest, tapping each other. So that's another great way. Or just go all the way to the wall and have your legs up the wall. As you get ready for your Final resting pose, close your eyes. Just reconnect with your breath. Relax your feet. I'd like for you to imagine as you're breathing here, as you inhale through 
Imagine you're coming up from your right toe, your right big toe. And there's this is light that's coming up your right toe as you're inhaling, it's slowly coming up your right foot, up your right leg. It's like this light, this purifying light, which of course we know, right? Jesus washed us clean. So it comes up your entire right side. And as you exhale, it goes up to the from the top of your head down your left side and reverse your left side down your left arm, left body, down to your left leg, left foot. So then with your next breath, just imagine that your, your inhale there and now it's going up, up your left toe, up that left leg. Left side of your body, left arm, the left side of your head to the very top, and then right where you have that in between that gap. And then as you exhale, it all comes out, the cleansing down the right side. So imagine that each time you do your breath. As you continue to inhale, going through from one side, imagining a white light, just like this purifying light going through your body, cleaning it from anything that might be like kind of toxins from your body, kind of germs, anything. And then as you exhale, you can just imagine it being pushed out of you. Perhaps with each of these inhales and exhales, you feel even lighter because just imagine all of this big waste that's just been holding you down has now been depleted and cleansed from you. Amazing when we can also go to our Heavenly Father and render 
anything that might be guilty or, or toxins from our, our lives with his mercy, his grace, the white clean, the blood of Jesus. Come back. Just bring sensation back into your body. Just kind of wiggle your fingers and your toes. Rotate your ankles, your wrist. Feel free to like stretch your hands out wide and then just want to close back in naturally. Stretch your toes out wide. And then just allow it to just relax naturally. Bring your arms out to sides wide. Make them across that Jesus done and crucified. This blood totally cleansed us, so stretch yourself out wide. Feet come together straight. Inhale our arms all the way up over our head. Keep your eyes closed as you exhale. Bend your knees and roll over to your right side. Keep your cerebral spine aligned so have your right hand laying gently underneath your head. Still stay connected with your breath, still stay connected with the light. Using your upper arm, press yourself gently into a nice, comfortable seated position. Keep your eyes closed, just consider the scripture. He saved us not on the basis of deeds, which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit. Inhale through our nose. And exhale out breath, open mouth breath. Just cleanse it completely out. <sighs> Inhale, righteousness that he gave us. Exhale. Final third one, we'll inhale here. Exhale, out breath. Put your hands together, palm touching palm, resting right above your heart, tucking your chin down to your heart. Dear Father God, I just want to thank you so much for purifying us, for cleansing us, for your mercy and your grace through your son Jesus' blood. We we'll love you. Thank you. So much. Your son. Jesus, amen. Namaste.